23. It feels as if I've been watching the same Boaba season twice. There are hardly any differences between this season and season 22. Well, visually anyway. But I'm going to try and find some. But first, I'm going to talk about some changes that I didn't rant about in the last video, because that one was going on for way too long. Let's start with the animation. You know how I hate the bouncing and how it pisses all over the face of realism? Well, there's another thing that they keep adding in. Many instances where the engines tip over and then land back on the rails again. Thomas literally does this twice in the introduction seen in every single episode alone. Plus, flying off the rails at the top of Gordon's Hill as if he doesn't have any way to him. Remember when Hugo spent a whole day doing that and he failed because of his weight? Well, Thomas can now do that as easily as blowing his whistle. I know this is Jamfield's attempt on making the show more exciting and stuff, but this is unbelievably dangerous to the drivers and firemen, clearly still in the cab. And the engines do this all the time. Hell, I can only imagine what being in the cabs must be like if they are gesturing everywhere all the time. I wonder even more because coaches are bouncing now. And there is this repeated section that bothers me. I don't see it as a good thing when a show that was never repetitive and formulaic suddenly becomes repetitive and formulaic. On the topic of the animation, it is very clearly downgraded compared to previous Brenner seasons, which Jamfield themselves also animated for. It might look a bit better than, say, season 17 in some areas, but when comparing a screenshot from season 22 to season 21, to me, it's like using Train Simulator 2019 for your Thomas Trains videos, but then for the next video, you use Trains 2006. It just looks worse by comparison. This is evident in the creamish faces on the engines, delayed movements and impacts, the lighting making it hard to see the paintwork of the engines, pretty bare sets, and the water. That's really meant to be water, is it? It looks like blue slime. I like to think that the reasons for the downgraded graphics is that A, they don't want to risk getting bankrupt, and B, is because they needed to save up space and storage for all the international sets. I need to talk about them. Most of them are just reskins of already existing Sodor sets. Like, this is clearly Brandon Docks. That's Tidmouth Shed. That's Nabford. That's the Shunting Yard. That's Maithwaite. That's the Suspension Bridge with a different track arrangement. The lazy recycling clearly isn't just present in the sets. The coaches, the trucks, and even the engines are recolors of Sodor engines and rolling stock. That's Henry, that's Ryan, that's Oliver, that's Edward, that's Judy and Jerome, that's Henry. Again, I know it would have taken them too much time and money creating entirely new models based on actual Indian, Australia and Chinese rolling stock, but just reusing British trucks and coaches in different colours is just... Lazy. And I bet you they were saving their budget on the voice cast, hiring actual foreign voice actors from the countries they are showing on the show, most of them only voicing one character, plus a few tiny minor roles. I mean, after the whole Up Who controversy happening around the same time, I don't blame them for this decision. One change to the show is that the episodes themselves have reverted back to being 7 minutes long, the same length as the Hit Era episodes, instead of 9 minutes. And 
and just like in the hit era, they fill up the remaining 1 minute 45 seconds with stuff that we don't really need to see in every single episode, including an introduction where Thomas does his momentum murdering stunt and tells the audience of the story we're about to see. That's kind of spoiling things, don't you think? Rebecca always sees the best in everyone, even Diesel. So, when he asked for help, she didn't realize he was playing a... Oh, wait! Why am I telling you? You can see what happened right now. Oh my god, they acknowledge this? So what is the point? And a closing segment where Thomas straight up tells the audience the moral we're supposed to learn from the episodes. Did they really think the children are so dumb that they can't figure out the moral for themselves? Kids aren't as stupid as you may think they are. And what's especially weird is the way they tell the moral. Not only do they recap the episode that we have just watched a few seconds ago, as if they think the children have short-term memory loss, but they also compare the story from the Bwaba episode to a Brenner episode episode. Like, they compare what Rebecca does to Gone Fishing, they compare Rosie is Red to Henry in the Dark, and Millie and the Volcano. This seems to indicate that the writers are running out of ideas. This is especially a possibility when they reference the same Brenner episode in more than one of these segments. Like, Who's Jeffrey is referenced in both Outback Thomas and Apology Impossible. Luke's dear friend is referenced in both Thomas's Animal Arc and Tiger Trouble. One change that they have made in season 23 was by adding additional detail to the new Steam Team members, Bulgy and Bertie, for some reason, and no one else. Like, they have added in additional handrails, footsteps, license plates, and a shit ton of rivets. I know steam engines have rivets to connect each metal plate together, but not this many. I mean, Jesus. I don't understand why they added this in. The models were just fine the way they were. Why improve something that was already iconic? I would understand if they made this change in the Brenner era, back when they were trying to be realistic, because these extra details are realistic looking details. But no, they have done it halfway into the Bwaba era, with no realistic movement, engines bouncing all the time and tipping off the rails, no weight, no momentum, and a British steam engine on foreign railways, even though he might not be the right gauge to run on them. And they also reanimated the introduction and more segment with the new detailed Thomas model as well. Why go through all that trouble reanimating the same exact bits, copying them frame by frame, if all that is different is just covering Thomas with rivets? Why didn't they make this change in season 22, and then they wouldn't need to reanimate them? Or better yet, don't add the details at all. That would save you a bit of time and money. They also got rid of Mark Morahan as the narrator, even though he was still there to voice Dexter in season 22, and they decided to make Thomas narrate the stories instead. I... I don't know what to make of this. I wouldn't mind it if Thomas only narrated the beginning of each episode, you know, for exposition purposes. And if the Bwaba movie has taught us anything, it's that the show is now at the point where the voice acting can do the storytelling for us. But no, Thomas narrates the episodes the same way Mark Morahan used to. It makes sense for him to narrate the international episodes, since he was the only Sudrian engine there. But in some Sodor episodes, like The Case of the Puzzling Part, Counting on Nia, Hunt the Truck, Heart of Gold, Diesel Do Right, Rangers of the Rails, Diesel Glows Away, Out of Sight, First Day on Sodor, Nia and the Unfriendly Elephant, and Jay 
James the Super Engine, Thomas doesn't have a major role, or he doesn't appear at all. So how can he tell the stories if he wasn't even there? You could say the engines involved in those episodes told Thomas those stories, and then Thomas told the audience. But by that logic, why couldn't the lead characters from these episodes narrate their own stories? And finally, we get to probably the worst new addition to the show. The fantasy sequences. Thomas the Tank Engine, you've come in on the wrong platform. Ah! You're causing confusion and delay. I feel like I'm losing more and more brain cells with each one I watch. Some of them, like the ones in Counting on Nia, Hunt the Truck, A Kangaroo Christmas, The Case of the Puzzling Parts, Chucklesome Trucks, Wish You Were Here, and The Great Little Railway Show, weren't too bad. But all of the others are just... Painful. Some people would say that it's a way for the animators to do whatever they like. This allows for more creative freedom, right? Well, here's the problem. Not only do the visuals just murder the realistic take on the show, real or not, but every single one of these dreams are just filler. It's all just mindless, wacky, fast-paced garbage in an attempt to entertain those 2020s kids raised on Teen Titans Go. They don't advance the story, they never get mentioned again, and sometimes it could lead an engine into an accident. <laughs> Dreaming. Then stop fucking dreaming then! Now that we have covered season 22's leftovers out of the way, let's talk about the episodes this season, getting the international ones out of the way first. I like that this season is expanding to more countries. Well, two. And the Brazilian and Italian sets look a lot more originally made than all the other ones. Like, apart from the station buildings, none of them really look like reused Sodor sets. They actually look like they were made from the ground up. I also like that a couple of these episodes are focusing on some of the international characters in a way. Like, Crowning Around is about Rajiv whining over his missing crown. Round. Garage Match is about Raul wanting to win something against Thomas. Lorenzo Solo is about Lorenzo wanting to be away from his friend Beppe for an important job. They aren't really about their origins or their backstory, like the Young Bao episode next season, but at least we get a little bit of a taste of their personalities in these episodes, which is a nice change than every single episode in season 22 having this brainless, childless, experienced version of Thomas as the main. But even with that said, these episodes are still really pointless and not that great to watch. And as I have just said, Thomas is absolutely experienceless in every single one of these episodes. As if all of the lessons and railway safety stuff he had learned on Sodor is completely wiped from his mind as soon as he is in these countries. He gets easily distracted in India and gets his delivery screwed over. Twice, like he had done many times before in the Hit era. He is absolutely scared of dragons in two China episodes, even though he was the one who cheekily scared Percy with a paper dragon to get his own back in season three. He takes a shortcut and comes off the rails while racing someone. That doesn't sound familiar at all, does it? He abandons his job to search for a panda. He hasn't 
have done that a million times. Thomas delivers a giant water wheel on a flatbed, but then it rolls off and causes havoc. I know it was Edward who delivered it in season 12 and not Thomas, but it's really hard to not see the similarities. And the new Italian and Brazilian characters? Well, Gina is rather hot-tempered and huffs crossly easily. I do not huff and puff. Huh. Raul is competitive, Gabriella is nothing, Cassia is nothing, Emerson is nothing, Fernando is nothing. Do you see how pointless all of this is? Gustavo is just a carbon copy of Gordon. And the episode knows this. Esther is just fascinated with digging up artifacts. Stefano is... A straight-up toy advertisement. At least Mattel was subtle with its toy promotions in other Thomas productions, but this looks like a parody. I don't even think this guy has a real-life basis, unlike every single other character in existence in this series. He purely exists only to sell toys. The pack were much better off coming to Italy on this toy than just coming on some normal common old fairy, right? And then there's... Lorenzo and Beppe. Well, okay, Beppe is actually alright. He's a decent voice of reason character. But Lorenzo? I'm sorry, but he is the most annoying character in the entire damn series. Yeah, the logging locos were just as annoying, but at least they didn't all sing every single one of their lines. Look, I get that Lorenzo loves to sing opera, but he doesn't need to sing every single line. In Lorenzo's solo, he is singing sadly with Dame Bella Canto in a sad moment of defeat, but it doesn't look or sound as if they are sad. This looks like a joke. We are long, 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 And all of this isn't really good opera singing either. It's downgraded opera singing because it's a kid show. I don't know, maybe Vincenzo Nicoli was having fun with the role, but... <sighs> But then, there is my most hated episode in the whole Buaba series. Too Loud Thomas. They make the constant opera singing even worse by having Thomas do it. Horribly! <laughs> This season is making me hate opera, and singing in general. There are also two new Sodor characters introduced in the new pack episodes. I know, right? They are putting a lot of attention on the pack this season. That shocked me as well. I wonder if they will focus on some other minor characters next season for the 75th anniversary. Fuck the Scarlo engines. We don't think they're marketable. Buy our brand new food themed minis instead. The first one is Brenda, the bulldozer. Yep, another bulldozer, even though they already have one. In fact, she is basically just a gender swapped Byron with a different color. Well, then why didn't they just bring Byron back? No, wait, they wanted female representation into the fucking pack as well as the Steam Team. Hell, why stop there? That's only two girls against five males. Why not add in Jane the front loader, Amy the digger, Megan Mona the dump trucks, Olivia the excavator, Katie the crane, Nina the steam shovel, Patricia the cement mixer, Nicole the transporter, Betsy the steamroller. Oh yeah, and Isabella, duh. 
The other new one is Darcy, the Tunnel Borer. I appreciate them adding in a completely new machine that wasn't used in the pack before, unlike Brenda. But, I'm sorry, doesn't she look way too modern to fit in with the time period of the show? I think it's the decision to make her yellow. Every modern day construction vehicle is yellow. You know, like cat diggers. I don't know, it's the fact that she is painted yellow and that she is a completely different and bigger design than the other pack members here. She just looks out of place to me. And her character? Well, in First Day on Sodor, she wants to fit in, makes a few mistakes at the start, but builds more confidence when she is called for assistance. Not too different from Rebecca's introduction, isn't it? Or even Jack's introduction in Season 6. And in Deep Trouble, she is the sensible type character, like the Diggers, when Max and Monty tease her, and then she rescues Monty with her unique ability. Well, that was quick. I didn't expect her to be that sensible that quickly. I thought she would have continued throwing her spiky arm around in a dangerous way, because the production crew seriously thinks that's good humor. And I am really surprised that it took them until this season to add in Miss Jenny. Yeah, like the actual blue hard hat, Irish accent, controller of the pack, Miss Jenny. I thought they would have brought her back in season 20, where they reintroduced the rest of the pack. I didn't expect her to see her in the same season that gave us... Nope. Speaking of that, let's talk about my most hated episodes here. Gordon gets the giggles. I have a hard time believing this thing is Gordon. I get that he would laugh over Rebecca's aftermath, but I wouldn't expect him to laugh that hard. I can list many other situations that were funnier than just being covered in honey and vegetables. He even said at one point that it wasn't even that funny. Which, it wasn't. And yet... <laughs> Remember back in Season 8, where Gordon thought the Fat Controller would scrap him, all because he was making a squeaking noise? Well here, he thinks the Fat Controller will take the Express away from him, just because he's laughing. Why would he think he would do that after something so little as... Laughing. At least in Squeak, Rattle and Roll, it made a little bit of sense. The strange noises can be related to faulty parts or falling apart. But here, he's just laughing. So what? Everybody laughs at stupid things like Rebecca's situation here. Hell, you laughed at one of Charlie's jokes in season 17, and you kept yourself under control there. How is this any funnier than a pirate joke? Also, it sounds as if Keith Wickham is hurting his lungs during this episode. I mean, his overacting here is really pushing his limits. It was my funnel! There's something wrong with it! <laughs> yes, of course I am! Absolutely! Absolutely nothing funny to see here! Yes! Uh, okay, Thomas! <laughs> Bye! Diesel glows away. So Diesel is so much of an unnecessarily rude dick to everyone that Paxton thinks it might be better off if Diesel wasn't around. A bit out of place for Paxton to say, but whatever. Diesel hears this and decides to hide away and stay in an old shed, leaving everyone to do his work as well as their own. After realizing how important he is to the railway, the others will go looking for Diesel and learn to accept him in spite of his rudeness. That doesn't sound like a bad idea for an episode, honestly. But then he covers himself in glow-in-the-dark paint, pretending to be a spirit, explaining his wants to Nia and Paxton, which was pointless. And then, instead of hiding in the same shed he was in before, he instead hides in a blue mountain quarry tunnel. 
Why? The shed was the first place they looked. If you want the others to find you, hide in the place they would mostly expect you to be. Also, the tunnel he, Paxton, and Nia go into is the same tunnel Luke used to hide in. A narrow gauge tunnel. This is your proof right here that no one on the crew gives a shit anymore. Wish you were here. I don't talk about specific international episodes during this section because, well, nearly all of them are terrible, but I can't ignore this one because it brings up a problem with these episodes. Good night to you too, Percy. I love being here in China with my new friends, but I wish you were here with me too. If Thomas is just now starting to miss his friends back home, then why the hell does he keep leaving Sodor? No one ever asked or forced him to go to China again, and nothing is stopping him from going back. If he doesn't want to miss Percy, then he shouldn't leave Sodor anymore. Sample! If you hate leaving your friends behind, then why do you still travel so far from Sodor? And you would think the episode would be about Young Bao and Hong Mei finding out more about Percy or something and trying to cheer him up. But no, the second half of the episode is a plotline that has nothing to do with Thomas's homesickness. It isn't brought up again until the last minute, where Hong Mei then tells him to send Percy a postcard. So, what was really the point of the Dragon Boat stuff, other than just ripping off the other Dragon episode you made last year? Chuckle some trucks. <laughs> Good luck sleeping tonight, kids. I've put this one on the list because, well, absolutely nothing happens. Rebecca is asked to take some troublesome trucks to the other side of the island. The others warn her to be careful. She thinks it'll be great fun. She has fun pulling the trucks. She delivers them, and that's it. Nothing else happens. Huh? <laughs> What just happened? Come on, this was one of the cut season 21 episodes. The other one of the two that stars Rebecca, and this was all they came up with? What if Rebecca did crash from enjoying the journey too much or something? Like, she was so distracted happily singing the trucks' silly song that she crashes into a train due to passing a red signal, or derails over some switched point, or crashes through some buffers into a siding. Then she would truly learn how troublesome they can be and be on the same level as the other engines. But no, she delivers them safely without a hitch. Once again, another pointless episode. As if we didn't get enough of those already. Panicky Percy. The rails will be icy, so don't go too fast. We don't want any accidents, do we? <laughs> is that all he came here for? My big problem with this one is Percy himself. I mean, I get that Percy is usually the timid one of the Steam Team, but he's not fucking paranoid. I mean, not to this degree. Oh no! We're going to crash! <laughs> yeah, silly steamies. Come the fuck on, Percy. And when Percy doesn't see Thomas at Napford, he immediately assumes that after just 15 seconds, that he's been caught in an avalanche. On Duck's branch line. A coastal line. Did he ever assume that Percy was... Oh, I don't know. Early? And that he didn't think to just wait until Thomas did arrive? No, he decides to go fast on icy rails and flies off the rails because of it. It's pretty sad that even Nia knows not to do that. And this is her first winter on Sodor, too. I'm sorry, but this episode just ruined Percy for me.
And then, there is the double-length episode, Steam Team to the Rescue. And yes, I am talking about the double-length episodes in this video and the Season 24 video tomorrow. Because unlike the specials, they aren't treated like movies. They are formatted like normal episodes, opening and closing credits and all. Anyways, what happens in this special? Every cylinder! I'm going overboard! What the fuck was that? What's that? I don't even I What? Hello? Cranky? Am I watching the same show? You! I thought I was gonna go right over! If there was any proof that nobody cared about quality anymore, it would be this episode. This has to be the most unrealistic canon Thomas production I have ever seen. Oh, why do you keep complaining about realism? The trains have faces on them. It wasn't meant to be realistic in the first place. Shut up. Just shut the fuck up. You don't understand. Nobody understands. <sighs> This episode is giving people the illusion that these seven engines, Thomas, Gordon, James, Percy, Emily, Nia, and Rebecca, are the only steam engines on the entire island. But there are hundreds of other ways this problem could be resolved, because... Guess what? This has happened before! All of that chaos happening at the docks? All of that could have been resolved if they all remembered that Edward exists. Show people how truly special he is. Or Bill and Ben. Or even Timothy. Remember No Help At All from Season 19, where Timothy helped at the docks when Salty was away? Why not send him over again? Or why couldn't the Fat Controller borrow some engines from the mainland to do the Diesel's jobs? Samson, Spencer, Merlin, Lexi, Theo. Or what about every single other engine on Sodor? Give them a few more jobs. Henry, Edward, Toby, Rosie, Doc, Oliver, Ryan, Daisy, Stanley, Charlie, Harvey, Philip, Donald, Douglas, any of those! <sighs> if I wasn't so close to the end, I would give up right here. If the production crew don't care about what they are making anymore, then why should I care when I'm watching it? They ended the episode unresolved and in a rushed manner. Why should I care? Let's just talk about the songs. First up is the song from Mary Sue's To The Rescue, Don't Stop. Everyone in the fandom, and this time I really do mean everyone, says that they really like this song. And, um... That song in the Steam Team special wasn't bad. But I am the only one here who is in the apparently tiny minority. I really didn't care. It was so generic and bland. Look, I have listened to over 100 songs from this show during the past few months, and most of them blend into each other. I can't remember at this point if I can tell Determination from Best Friends Express. We all know the Steam Team is going to get everything done and save the day, so why should I listen to a song about it? Next up is Lorenzo Solo. Uh... It's fine. It's just Lorenzo singing to us the events of Digs and Discoveries, along with some original animation for the music video. It's not actually that boring, really. And finally, the Sodor construction crew. I like the singer and the construction sounds used in the music, but again, it's pretty bland and forgettable.
I am honestly happy as hell that we are getting closer and closer to the end because I don't think I can take much more of this. While I think there were more episodes this season that I thought were okay, unlike last season, like Diesel Do Right, Rangers of the Rails, and all of the episodes Michael White had written, this season is still awful, and in some cases was worse than season 22. As awful as that season was too, at least it didn't have a gigantic amphibious toy that they call a character, or an annoying opera singing engine, or the steam team written as Mary Sue's who can save the docks from drowning in a city of empty boxes. <sighs> I really, really want to give up. But there is just one more season left. Just 23 more episodes. If I had survived these last two seasons, then I think I can survive this last one. How bad can it be?